humans, I'm Mr. King. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. So today, we are going to go into this okay, past year papers of 2021 May, June paper 41. Alright, let's go. See Q1. Okay, give the name of the process that is used. This is the first one. Okay, how to produce ammonia from nitrogen. Okay, the process it is called table process to separate nitrogen from liquid air. You see, from liquid air. So it is fractional distillation. Okay, they, I mean, they get separated based on different boiling point. Okay, next one, to produce bromine from molten lead to bromide. You see, electrolyte, molten lead to bromide. So from who you know, it is electrolysis. To separate undissolved solid from aqueous solution. Filtration. To produce amino acid from proteins, you see, from polymers back into monomers. And it is what we call hydrolysis. Okay, next one, to separate a mixture of amino acid. Remember, you see, for the separations of all the natural compounds like amino acid, glucose, okay, we use chromatography. Okay, next one. See, given with this table, okay, complete the table and deduce the numbers of proton, electrons, neutrons. See, first, remember, you see, the number on the top left hand corner, okay, it is neutron number, okay, which is the sum of proton and neutron. Okay, numbers at the bottom left hand corner, it is the total numbers of proton. This is given here, numbers of proton 12. Okay, how about electrons? You see, is there any charge? See, there is no charge. This is an atom. Okay, remember, atom they are neutral because they have the same numbers of proton and electrons. So therefore, the electron number 12, neutron, 25 minus 12, you get 13. Okay, then next one you see, given with this. So what's the proton number? See, 29, electron. So you see, how do you know what's the numbers of electron? See, there is charge. This is two positive. Two positive means they are extra two proton compared to electron. See two positive what? Okay, so extra two proton are uh, two proton. So therefore answer 27. Okay, two extra protons compared to electrons. That's the reason why okay, it has a charge of two positive. Okay, next one, see, okay, what is the element with 17 proton? Okay, if you refer to the periodic table, it is Cl. Okay, proton number, neutron number P plus M, 17 plus 20, you get 37. But then, you see, if you check on the numbers of proton electrons, you see, there is one extra electron. So, therefore, there is a charge of negative one. Okay, then... Okay, see, given with, okay, uh, potassium reacts with chlorine to form potassium chloride. So, write a chemical equation. Potassium reacts with remember, chlorine, okay, it is Cl2. Halogens, they are all diatomic to form KCl. Balance the equation, left hand side, they are 2 Cl, right hand side, make sure they are 2, 2K, 2K. And then, you are asked to draw this electron arrangement. See, potassium, see, potassium initially, it is 2, 8, 8, 1. It loses one electrons to form K positive with 2, 8, 8. So you see, 2, 8 just continue with cross 8 electrons with a charge positive 1. See, Cl initially, it was 2, 7. So it gains one electrons to form 2, 8, 8. So you see, the symbol for the electrons of chlorine it is dot. So you see, initially it has seven dots, seven valence electrons. It gains one electron from potassium. So therefore, there will be one cross, okay, with the charge negative one. Okay, next, what is meant by the term electrolysis? Okay, it means okay, the breaking 
down of ionic compound using electricity. Okay, keywords breakings of ionic compound one mark with electricity one mark. Okay, then you are asked to name the products at both the anode and cathode. This is given here. This is molten potassium chloride. Remember, say molten means there is no water molecule in it. Okay, so what are the ions present in molten potassium chloride? So it contains only potassium and chloride. That's it. Okay, anode will always attract negative ions. So anode attract chloride. Chloride will get discharged to form chlorine gas cathode attract positive ions potassium okay potassium will get selected to be discharged to form uh, potassium atom okay product you can just write potassium okay, next one okay ha huh? so you are now given with concentrated equals potassium chloride okay so what's the half equation because so remember okay when it comes into electrolysis, okay, the very first thing that you have to do is list out all the ions present in the electrolyte. See, this is concentrated equals potassium chloride. So therefore, there are potassium chloride. Aqueous solution contains water. So therefore, there is always hydrogen and hydroxide. Okay, All the positive ions will get attracted to cathode. All the negative ions will get attracted to anode. So, which one will get selected to be discharged at cathode? See, cathode, so which one, let me see. We always pick the one that is lower, you see, hydrogen. Okay, so therefore in this case, hydrogen will get selected. Remember, you see, potassium, it can only get selected in molten state. Okay, so hydrogen gets selected to form hydrogen gas. Okay, then what is the products at anode? See, anode attract negative ion. So you see, remember, you see, this is concentrated. If it is a concentrated electrolyte, okay, the halide ions will always get selected. See, there's halide, Cl. Yeah, so therefore, products, it is chlorine gas. And then, what is the potassium compound remains in the solution? See, hydrogen gets selected, no more hydrogen. Chloride gets selected, no more chloride. So, Eventually, the electrolyte will left only with potassium and hydroxide. So, therefore, forming potassium hydroxide. That's it. Okay, the next one. Okay, see, you are asked to draw the dot and cross diagrams of this uh, molecule chlorine. Okay, dot and cross, which means you can only use dot and cross that's it okay you see cl287 show only the outermost shell electron see seven it needs one more to become stable so therefore they can only share one electron so cl share one seven valence share one left only with six so remaining six electrons they are all outside another cl share one remaining six they are all outside so which eventually okay so this is how it looks like Alright, okay, next one. See, given with melting point, boiling point. Okay, so deduce the physical state at negative 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what's the physical state? You see, you are given with the melting point, boiling point. So if you notice, right, see, negative 75 is placed in between the melting point, boiling point. So from here, we know that the physical state, it would be liquid. Okay, why? Because at 75 degrees Celsius, okay, it is in between the melting point and boiling point. Of course, you can, know, uh, you can also say because it is greater than the melting point but lower than the boiling point. Acceptable. Okay, then next one. See. Explain in terms of the structures and also bonding. Okay, why potassium chloride has a much higher melting point compared to chlorine? So you see, in your answer, you need to uh, name the types of the particles. Yeah, 
types of the forces of attraction and also the strength of the force. Alright, so first you have to mention here, okay, potassium chloride is an example of ionic compound. So therefore, it has strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. Okay, and chlorine is a covalent compound, so therefore it has weak intermolecular forces of attraction between molecules. Yeah, and these are all the keywords. Okay, then see given with this. So first, how do you define the term equilibrium? Okay, the definition for this term it is always a two marks question. So the very first point you have to mention, okay, the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the backward reaction. Okay, the concentrations of reactants and products remain unchanged. Then next one, see, the plunger of the gas ring is pushed in. Okay, the temperature doesn't change. Okay, see, the mixture initially turns darker brown, but then after a few seconds, the mixture turns lighter brown because the equilibrium shift towards the left. So you see first one, explain why the mixture initially turns darker brown in color. Why? Okay, this is because the particles, they get closer to one another. So you see, initially, yeah, like example, okay, these are the particles. So when you push the plunger okay, in, Okay, the space available it is really limited. So you see now all the brown particles, they are closer to one another. So this is the reason why it turns darker brown in color. Alright, okay. Then you see why the positions of equilibrium shift to the left. I see when you push the plunger in, the space available decreases. So what happens? It will increase the pressure. Okay, let me see how pressure affects the positions of equilibrium again. Okay, uh, increase in pressure will always favor the side with lesser mole. Okay, so now you have to compare the numbers of molecules on both left hand side, right hand side. See left hand, left hand side one. There's only one. Right hand side there are two. So you see which side has lesser mole? Left hand side, isn't it? So this is the reason why position will shift towards the left. So answer okay. Increase in pressure favors the side with lesser mole. Or you can also say because left side has lesser molecule, can also. Okay, you have to com I mean you have to compare okay, which side has lesser mole. Alright, okay. The next one is this given here. Forward reaction is endothermic. So which means if forward is endo, uh, means backward it is exothermic. Okay, so state what happens to the position okay, when the temperature increases. Okay, you see, increase in temperature will always favors endothermic reaction. Okay, decrease in temperature favors exothermic reaction. So you see, increase in temperature favors endo. So which side is endo? See, endo is forward reaction, isn't it? So position shift to the right. Okay, so position shift to the right. Okay, because forward reaction is endothermic. And then what happens to the rate of the forward and backward reaction? Okay, when the temperature increases. Remember, see, increase in temperature will always increase the rate of reaction. Again, okay, doesn't matter whether it is forward or backward reaction, which means both the rate of forward backward reaction, okay, they will increase. Okay, this is about rate of reaction. Okay, the next one, ah, preparations of salt. Okay, see given here, okay, salt, they are insoluble, okay, uh, they are made by precipitation, you see. Uh, let to iodide it is insoluble. All nitrate soluble in water, all sodium they are soluble in water. See, you are provided with solid let to nitrate and solid sodium iodide. Okay, so how would you make a pure samples of let to iodide by precipitation? Alright, see, we know that in order to produce uh, insoluble salt, okay, we need soluble salt. To react with soluble salt, okay, to produce insoluble salt. 
So therefore you see, given here, both the reactants, they are solid. So therefore the very first step you have to do is, you have to dissolve both the solid with water. Okay, huh? Then only followed by mixing both the solution and stir. Okay, then after that we filter out the precipitate form. And remember, every time after filtration is carried out, it is always followed by rinsing the precipitate with distilled water and drying with filter paper. So this is how you obtain a pure and dry crystals of uh, precipitate. Okay, and then followed by this chemical equation. Yeah, huh? You have to make sure that it is a balanced chemical equation. Okay, then next one. Okay, huh? So what is the test for oxygen? Okay, we can test oxygen with glowing wooden splinter and result relight. Okay, next one. See how to balance this equation. See, left hand side, there are total how many zinc? 1 over here, multiply with 2, they are total 2. So to make it 2, put 2 in front. Okay, then left hand side, they are total how many nitrogen? See, NO3 bracket 2. So 1 multiply with 2, we have 2. 2 multiply with the 2 in front of the game, we have total 4 nitrogen. So to make it 4, we put 4. Okay, then now balance in terms of Hydrogen, see, left hand side, there are total how many hydrogen? See, dot 6 H2O, which means there are total 6 water molecules. See, first, 6 multiplied with 2, we have 12. Okay, but 12, you need to multiply with 2. Okay, remember, see, this 2 it is for the whole compound. Okay, so 12 multiplied with 2, we have 24. Okay, so now we have 24 hydrogen on the left hand side. So, right hand side, make it 24. See, there are 2 over here. So therefore, it is 12. Okay, I see. Then, if you calculate on the numbers of oxygen, okay, it is also balanced on both the left-hand side, right-hand side. Yeah, so this is how you balance this equation. Alright, okay, then. Okay, see, given with this. So, uh, a student carry out an experiment to determine the values of X in this uh, hydrated compound. So describe how the student can check that all the water has been given off. So how do you know, okay? How do you know there is no uh, there is no more water left in the compound? Yeah, two marks. So first we have to uh, repeat the heating and weighing process until a constant mass is obtained. Okay, so first you have, to uh, you have to mention, okay, repeat the heating and weighing process until you obtain a constant mass, which means when the mass stops decreasing, okay, means there is no more water molecule left. Okay, if the mass still keeps on decreasing, it means there is still water left in the compound. Alright, so this is how you make sure they care okay, the compound it is totally dry or it is totally uh, without water molecule in it. Alright, okay, then ah, here comes the calculation. So first, what is the numbers of moles of sodium sulfate remaining? Yeah, so first you see what is the mass of sodium sulfate? So it's given here, the mass it is 0 0.71 grams. Okay, you are going with mass. So how do you use the mass to look for the moles? Okay, remember in terms of mass, the formula is N equals to M over MR. Okay, given with the M 0 0.71. Okay, what's the MR? See, MR given here, 142. So press on calculator, eventually you will get 0 0.005 mole. Hmm, so this is the answer. Okay, and then next one, what is the mass of H2O given off? Yeah, so, how do you know, you see? I see, you are given with the initial mass of the hydrator compound, you see? When there is water in it, the total mass is 161. Yeah, huh? And then, when there is no water, you see, the sodium sulfate remaining it is 0 0.71. So, what is the mass of water molecule produced? Yeah, so 1.61 grams minus 0 0.71 grams, so eventually we will get 0 0.9. 
Okay, then what is the numbers of moles of H2O given off? As you may see, you have to mass 0 0.9. So N equals to M over MR. So 0 0.9 divided by the MR for H2O is given here 18. So eventually you will get 0 0.05 mole. Okay, then how? What is the values of x? So how do you look for the ratio? How? See, given here you see, Na2SO4, okay, dot xH2O. So given here you see, means it is 1 over here, which means when the ratio is 1, okay, how? What is the ratio of this? Okay, ah, so you see what is the see what is the most that you have about sodium sulfate? Okay, we found that it is 0 0.005 mole, and the most of water molecule 0 0.05. Okay, ah, so you can, so you compare the ratio, so eventually you will get x equals to 10. Okay, ah, or you can also use 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.005. Okay, you get 10. Okay, so this is how look for the ratio x. Next one, ha, extractions of metals. Okay, so you see what is the main ore of iron? Okay, iron it is called hematite. And what is the substance that enters the blast furnace at A? See, A is an A, okay? It is hot air. Or you can also write air. Okay, remember, do not write oxygen. All right. Yeah, then substance that leave the blast furnace at B. See B, see B it is placed above molten iron. Okay, we know that it is molten slag. Okay, molten slag has lower density compared to molten iron. And then what are the two reasons for using coal in the blast furnace? Okay, first it is to produce heat. Okay, it reacts with carbon. I mean carbon reacts with oxygen to produce heat. And then next, it acts as reducing agent. Okay, remember, cook form carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is then used to reduce the hematite to form molten iron. Okay, next one, deduce the formulas of the negative ions. See, given to you Fe2+. Remember, you see cross method. So, how do you get the formula Fe S2 again? Yeah, cross method, bring the two back to the Fe2+. It's 1 over here. When you bring the 1 back to S, it is S negative. So the formula is S negative 1. Okay, next one. Okay, give two properties okay, from the list in which iron differs from group 1. So you see, huh? so how I mean, what's the differences between iron? See, iron is that, uh, it's an example of transition elements. So the first difference will be. Okay, forms color compound. Okay, only transition metals can form color compound. What else? That it has variables oxidation state. Or you can also write add as catalyst. Okay, any of these two. And then next one, two properties from the list in which Iron is similar. You see, they're both metals, isn't it? Ha. So all metals they are uh, good conductors of electricity. What else? Okay. Ha. Metals they also form soluble salt. Yeah. Okay. Or forms basic oxide. Okay. Any of these two as well. Okay. Then okay. See. Uh, how magnesium blocks prevent iron from rusting? Okay, two marks. Okay, so first you have to compare the reactivity. So from here we know that uh, magnesium is more reactive than iron. So therefore what happens next? Okay, uh, magnesium is oxidized by losing electrons okay which eventually helps to prevent the ion from getting oxidized hmm. so this is how you get two marks okay next one
Okay, it says, why replacing the magnesium blocks with copper blocks will not prevent the, uh, the wood from rusting? Okay, this is because copper is less reactive than iron. Hmm. Yeah, next one. Okay, you see. Calculations of empirical formula. Three marks. Okay, remember, see, first you have to show the working. Okay, easy three steps. Okay, so first step, okay, percentage, and then we look for the moles and lastly ratio. So given here, CHO. So first look for the most, remember okay, the formula to be used is always n equals to m over mr. Yeah, treat percentage as the mass. So 48 divided by 12, 16. So eventually you will get 4.05, 8.11, and 2.7. And then how do we look for the ratio? Okay, maybe see, compare the moles, use the smallest mole, and then all the moles divide by the smallest mole. See, 2.7 is the smallest number, so everything divide by 2.7. So eventually you will get uh, 1.5, you get 3, you get 1. But remember, you see, it has to be a simplest whole number ratio and you cannot simply just round off the number. No. Yeah, see, how can we make 1.5 into a whole number? Okay, remember, always start multiplying with 2. Okay, until you are, you are able to make it whole number. You see, 1.5 to whole number, we can just multiply with 2. So all the number we can just multiply with 2. So which eventually, the final ratio, it would be 3. 6 and 2. So therefore the answer is C3H6O2. That's it. Okay, easy 3 marks. Okay, then next one, see compound W has the empirical formulas of CH4O. Okay, with the relative molecular mass of 32. Uh, so what is the molecular formula? So now we need to look for the factors. Okay, like what is the factors that we have to multiply into the empirical formula? Okay, to obtain molecular formula with the mass of 32. Okay, so carbon 12, total 4 hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, so eventually you'll get 32 as well. Uh, so from here we know that N equals to 1. Okay, so answer is just CH4O. And if you look for the total mass of CH4O, okay, you will get 32. Okay, then next one, okay, deduce the general formulas of compound X and Y. See, it's mentioned here, okay, they are both carboxyl acid. Uh, what is the general formulas of carboxyl acid again? CNH2N plus 1, COOH. Alright, okay, then... Draw the structures of compound Y. Okay, show all the atoms. So you see, if you refer back to compound Y, you see there are total how many carbon? Four carbon, isn't it? Okay, and what is it called again? Okay, remember, acid with four carbon, it is called butanoic acid. So how do you draw it? Okay, C, O, O, H, and then three more carbon. Hmm. So this is how it looks like. Okay, then next one, give the name used to describe a family of similar compounds with the same general formula, similar chemical properties, and the same functional group. Okay, it's called homologous series. Okay, then propene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So state the color change observed when propene is added into the aqueous bromine. So what's the color changes again? Remember, see, it is always orange to colorless. Okay, please do not put brown in color. Okay, bromine in the forms of liquid, it is always orange in color. Bromine gas, it is brown. Okay. 
Okay, next one. See, propane, it can be produced by cracking long chain alkane. So you see, given here, you see, C15H32, it is cracked to produce an alkane and propane. Okay, in a 1 to 2 molar ratio. Okay, so which means, okay, we know that one of the products is propane. Propane, how many carbon? 3 carbon. Okay, C3H6. C ratio it is 2 over here. Okay, 1 to 2. Uh. Okay, ha. so what is the formula of the alkane? Okay, basically just make sure that both the equation are balanced. See left hand side total 15 carbon, right hand side they are total 6 carbon now. Okay, so to balance it, C9H20. See, C9H20, we know that it is an example of alkane. Alright, okay, then propene can be converted into polypropene. You can name the types of polymerization. Okay, remember, see, in alkene, it is always addition polymerization okay then complete the diagrams to show a section of polypropane see how do you draw polypropane okay so you see remember propane they are total three carbon okay so remember you see addition polymerization okay alkene they form polymers by breaking a double bond and you need only two carbon to form a double bond Okay, so from here we know that you see there are total two repeat units. Okay, you're asked to draw two repeat units. So one, two, see, H, H, you can add C at one side. Okay, and then put hydrogen at this side. Okay, see, total three carbon. So this is one monomers of polypropene. Okay, and then one more repeat unit. Hmm. It looks something like this. So basically, isn't it? Okay, you can put your C at any C. Okay, as long as in one repeat unit, they are only three carbon in total. Okay, and one more thing, please bear in mind that see you see you have to make sure that you show the bond clearly that it is joined between the carbon. Okay, and then followed by hydrogen at the side. Yeah, because we know, see, remember, because this bond is joined between the carbon, so therefore you have to show clearly that the bond is joined between the carbon. Okay, do not write it this way. Uh, if you write this way, it is 100% incorrect. Okay, so whether this bond is joined to the C or H, or is joined uh, between C and H, okay, which is impossible. Okay, so please be careful with this. Okay, you have to show clearly that the bond is joined between the carbon and then followed by hydrogen at the side. Alright, ah, then that's all for this paper. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.